Hello everyone and welcome to another Daily Dose of Gatsby. Today we are in episode number 8. As always, I am Shane Thomas. Make sure you're following me on Twitter at smthomas3. Make sure you're subscribed on YouTube, and if you haven't already, go to CodeKarate.com and sign up for the newsletter. Today we're going to be talking about how to take the Gatsby site we've been working on and actually deploy it to a live hosting provider. So we're going to show you how to use Netlify to get your site live. Let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is head over to Netlify.com. Netlify is a great hosting provider if you want to do more than just a standard you know, static hosting files. I mean, it can do it, but it can also connect to your either GitHub, GitLab, or Bitbucket account and make it so anytime you deploy a change or push up a change to your Git repository, it'll rebuild the site for you. So it's a really cool feature. It makes uh, static hosting sites like Gatsby work really well. It's free. It doesn't cost anything. And you can actually, I've seen production level sites hosted on just the free account for Netlify. So all you need to do is sign up or if you already have a site or an account, you can just log in. So you can see I have a bunch of them here. You can see here I have my Drupal site available. It has to be publicly available in order for the Netlify build process to be able to pull in the content. So keep that in mind. If you're not using Drupal for some reason, if you just stumbled upon this video, make sure whatever content source you're providing if it's you know WordPress, Drupal, or another you know hosted CMS solution, you're going to need to be able to make sure that's publicly available. It can't be you know in a local development environment. I also have my GitHub account here, which we're going to be looking at in just a second. Again, you don't have to use GitHub. You could use GitLab or Bitbucket. Uh, I'll just be using Git, uh, GitHub in this video. So if we take a look at our command line here, you can see I'm in my Gatsby video, which is just the, the root of my Gatsby project. If I check, there's already an initial commit. This is already a Git repository, but I'm going to have some changes. As you can see, I'm just going to go ahead and commit them all. So I'll just add a commit message. And now I need to actually push this up to GitHub. So this is pretty easy. I'm just going to go to my repos on GitHub. I will create a new one. I'm going to call it Gatsby video to keep it consistent. I could give it a description. I'll make it public. Why not? You can uh, use private repositories as well. So you don't have to make it public, which is a nice feature. I will go ahead and create it. And I'm going to have to add our remote origin here. And I'll just uh, do that. So we'll go ahead and push our origin or push our master branch up to our origin or this new repo that I just created. You can see if I refresh, we have our Gatsby site good to go. So this is the Gatsby site we've been working on. Again, in this Gatsby config file, it's going to reference the Drupal site. This has to be publicly available. Remember on your Drupal site, you can add uh, authentication. I would recommend it. If you go to the gatsbyjs.org site or the Gatsby source Drupal plugin, if you just search for that, you'll find how to do that. It's not too difficult. The next step, let's head on over to Netlify, click on new site from Git, and we'll have to connect to our Git provider. So again, you can use any of these Git providers. In this case, we're going to use GitHub for this example. Once it authenticates, I can go ahead and search for my Gatsby video, and I'll just click on that. It's going to load the branch. You don't have to de deploy the master branch. If you wanted to have a development branch or any other branch, you could select that from there. There's the basic build settings. You want it to use the Gatsby build command. You're going to want it to use the public directory. So you're not really going to have to change anything uh, around this. For this advanced build settings, now this is important if you are using uh, the Drupal authentication. 
So if you had a username and password and you had gated content, you didn't want to make it publicly available, then you would add environment variables for your username and password. And then you'd have to configure that in Gatsby config. And then those environment variables would be passed in during the build process to make sure it's pulling in the content from your Drupal site. So in an authenticated way, in this case, I just made it public. So I don't have to worry about it, but just keep in mind, you'd have to do a couple extra steps if you wanted to use authentication with your Drupal site. If you're using another backend besides Drupal, you'll have to use a similar process to get it to run in an authenticated manner. I'm just going to click deploy site. And this is going to take a few minutes. You're going to see it gives you um, a fun, or in this case, maybe a sad uh, URL. So it gives it a site name and this site name is part of the URL it generates. Just keep in mind, it generates a URL for you that is publicly available and can be used, but you can set up a custom domain and it doesn't cost any money to do that. So if you have your own domain and you want to point it at your site, it's free. You're not going to have to pay to in order to use your own custom domain. It does add HTTPS by default. A few other things as this thing's building, it's going to keep track of your deploys. You can turn it, you can learn about deploy previews, which this way, if you had a pull request or a new branch, you could actually preview a specific branch. So this is really cool. If you're developing out your site, you make a bunch of changes and you want to see what a certain PR would look like as its own site. So you can actually view it before it gets merged. So that's pretty cool. Netlify does have form submissions and it does allow um, multivariate or split testing. So we'll give it a second here for this to build and keep in mind the build process is going to be dependent on how much content your site has. If you have a site with a lot of content that's pulling in a lot of uh, content from Drupal or whatever your back your content source might be, it's going to take a lot longer. So you can see that didn't take too long. It's already ready to go. I just open this site up. You can see my site is here. Just to verify, if I go to articles, you can see it's loaded. I can go to the page. And this was the site we were working on in the past. That's really all there is to it. You can see it's incredibly fast and efficient to deploy your site to a hosting provider like Netlify. Keep in mind, you can set up your own custom domain. It was just an option on the Netlify page to set up that domain. If you don't want to use the default one it gives you, it's only a few steps. You just have to make sure you have a domain name. You can set up the DNS so it points to the right place and it'll be good to go. That's it for today on the Daily Dose of Drupal. Make sure you're subscribed, sign up for the newsletter, follow me on Twitter, smthomas3. Until next time, we'll see you later. Goodbye.